Welcome back to another episode of the Subaru Metro 6R4 thingy. Yeah, in the last video you saw us trying to start the roll cage in my head for the day. I thought, oh, it'll be blood by the time we get to the end of the day, done it. Being lovely, you know, body off, be a nice photo of it. That didn't happen. It took a lot longer. Still not even there. So I think again, this episode is just gonna be a case of just cracking on the roll cage. I think it's gonna take another couple of episodes. Uh, yeah, it just, just takes longer than it does, doesn't it? Um, that's even if I'm doing it properly. But if you're doing it properly, I expect it would even take even longer. But anyway, so yeah, let's, I wanna try and get some sort of more sort of a, more than just tax on it. Um, we're trying to do a bit of a, a bit more solid worlds to then try and sort of put a bit of strength back into the car. But we'll just see how it goes, we're just gonna, I'm not honestly feeling it today, but I've pushed myself down here, and we get down here. Um, you get this with all these sort of projects, anything with the restorations, with the big projects, small projects, everyone goes through it. We all go, oh, you hit that little wall when you think you've done a lot, realise there's so much more to do. But anyway. Uh, uh, thanks for somebody telling me I had the wrong headlights. Yeah, you are right. Um, I luckily managed to find a correct set of headlights come up on eBay this week. So I bought them, not cheap, and the guy didn't want PayPal, wanted bank transfer. So fingers crossed they turn up. Uh, that's that. Um, also, th maybe very close to purchasing a tube bender because I think we might need some for the door bars, put a little kink in them just near, just to sort of so they hug the door. Uh, but until we get the seats in, so that hopefully might arrive next week, that'd be good. Which in hindsight, maybe I should have just got that first and then I could have done the whole cage myself. But hey, hindsight is a wonderful thing. So yeah. Let's just crack on. Don't even know what's to tea tonight. I think it could be burgers. Uh, but I normally do fancy just getting a takeaway after doing a spending a day in the garage just because I can't be bothered to cook. So uh, we'll let you know anyway. But anyway, let's crack on and see if we can find something to do. Okay, I didn't film it, but I've gone around doing a bit more welding on the cage. N nowhere near fully welded, but let's not worry about that. Uh, I'm just going to come back to do this uh, cross member, that, uh, the rear rear diagonal, rear strut, brace, rear, whatever you call these things. Yeah, I've got it quite close with this and I nearly could uh, fill up the gaps a bit, but I've got plenty of tube. So what I'm gonna do is use this as a pattern to try and make another one, which is a bit better fitted, not far off. Um, as I said, I couldn't get it in the, my tube notcher because of the angle, it was just a bit too much more than, and that only does 60 degrees, and this is, must be 70, 80, 70. Um, so that was annoying. But yeah, um, so but what I'll do is instead of just completely wasting this one, I'll use it as a pattern for the other side as well and then we can then, uh, yeah, you know, move on. But what's worth doing is if you get one side sort of fitting really well, just try it on the other side because obviously if you've built your car to exact standards, it should just fit in the other side, technically. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Time lapse. Okay, we've got that one tapped in. It's not too bad. Not a bad angle. So I still don't know what I'm doing yet crosswise. Uh, obviously it's some sort of harness bar sometimes or whatever. But maybe a, a, we'll have to obviously get the seat in, obviously. We don't know. Well, we want to change the seat eventually, but at the moment we'll have to just run Subaru seats. Uh, but yeah. But no, but yeah, but no, oh, I shouldn't see that. That'll be uh, copyright. So let's make the other side now and just get that tacked in just so we can see what we're looking like. Uh, 
Okay. I thought I'd overdone it on that brace, but I think I've just got away with it, so. Yeah, it's always a bugger trying to grind when you do it by hand. It's so easy just to go, whoops, oh, I've cut too much off. But anyway, what's always good when building a roll cage in a wobbly car is to always stand back and see if the cage matches the wobbly bits and uh, everything looks parallel and, you know, run your eye along things. Obviously, you should measure as well, but yeah, you know, does things look right? If things look right, I think they could be right. So, uh, it's getting near lunch soon, but yeah, what, what are we going to do next? I did try jacking the front bar out. I think it will go, but my jack was uh, having a bit of a paddy on the horizontal and not the vertical. All right, I'll just pop the seat in, which maybe I should have done earlier, but I think we got away with it. Obviously, I need to take some measurements because I don't know, you know, if a bucket seat's racing seat's wider, thinner. Hopefully it's not wider because I can't go wider. But uh, yeah, I just sat in there, plenty of leg room. I'm six foot, so. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it will do it, it will do. Yeah, see, the seat can't really come back much further anyway. And uh, it had it quite lean back anyway, so I was quite arm stretched with the steering wheel anyway. So yeah, I've tried a lot of things to push those two front bars out. I don't really have the tools at the moment. My bottle jacks seem to uh, have a paddy when they're horizontal, not vertical. So we'll just have to leave that for the moment. So I'm just charging the battery because I'm thinking it's worth just trying to get it outside. It's always nice, nice, nice thumbnail. And we go from there. I'm not too sure. I'm gonna think I'm gonna leave some of the diagonals at the moment because I just this again, depending on what seats I finally run, if I ever do run, the the, the, the diagonal come here. If I put a cross section in here, that seat would have to go forward. So it might not be an issue, especially with bucket seats they are quite vertical anyway, so I don't think it'll be a problem. But for now, why put them in just, just for the sake of it? I don't need the pure strength. Uh, for just moving the car in and outside the unit. Uh, the key thing is just to at least tie the whole lot together, tie the body shell together, so we can then spin it round and then hopefully the front panels will arrive and then in the next few weeks, hopefully beginning of March, and then we can concentrate on the front end. But for now, we've got to concentrate on the back end and the middle end to uh, be ready. Just cleaning up some of the old panels that are uh, still on there. Should have done it ages ago, but you know me. So, uh, one of the next stages will be once we get the the seals on what we need to do. Well, what we need to do next at some point is move the body off. One, so we can finish welding up the bits of the roll cage that we can't get to. I think most of all the other bits that we're going to add onto the roll cage we'll be able to get to later anyway. Um, and then, yeah, clean up the. Uh, the body shelf still there's some just some extra seams down where the seals are we can get to all the other bits and bobs but the bits that we need to drop that back on we can then plug weld that to the two mil new inner seals remembering to actually uh, fit some seat belt points before we do that body back on and the next stage will be then to, to fill in these holes as neatly as we can so i'm thinking of a uh, in my head i've got some sheet 0.9mm sheet, um, we've got a joggler, so I think we can try and do some nice nice things. Obviously we've got to think about the fuel filler system at the moment. And I need to talk to you guys about that at some point. So maybe we're going to get the car out, we'll, uh, we'll run over that. And then you guys can give me your opinions on the fuel filler inlet problem. Oh, it's gold! Well, I was going to just take it outside it's actually a bit of sunny outside uh, but I've just had the uh, battery on charge for now but then I've forgotten to plug the extension lead at this end in so I hadn't had it on charge at all I know I said I wasn't gonna make a cross piece but I feel like just putting a cross piece in because I want to I just I've just 
got the hole cutter, notch cutter. And yeah, I'm just gonna do it. So that while I'm waiting for the battery to charge, make me feel good. And again, thanks for following while I'm just while I'm here saying these things. Thanks for following, subscribing. Don't forget to the like button because that really does help me go up in the YouTube rankings. And I could be that mad person on the front page of YouTube going, what the hell is he doing? I think I'm on about the millionth page of YouTube with a person going, what's he doing? But anyway, again, thanks for all my patrons that are supporting and yeah, thank you everyone. Saw this tip on YouTube, so it's not my tip. I can't remember which video though, I've watched too many notch video, notching videos. But yeah, obviously we're making a cross piece. The two bars that we're trying to meet are parallel. So this cut that we're gonna put through here needs to be parallel with the cut down there. So what they did, they stuck a bit of tube in the end there, in the notch, obviously put a spirit level on it, made sure it was vertical. Obviously we're hoping the drill's vertical. Bang, goes through. Worst case, do it by line of sight, it's better. Um, don't rely on the mark that you've just put on the, while you're trying to squeeze inside the car, because I've done that already. And uh, it can be wrong sometimes. Obviously it helps if you've got a lot more space and a proper workbench and all that stuff. But we don't. Okay, moment of truth. Uh, I've just put a bit of uh, wood down here, because I'm not gonna go right to the floor. I'm just gonna sort of go off a couple of inches just off base that's my idea anyway so, I'm going to delete this video if it don't fit by the way section uh, it goes in but it's just a, a bit annoying let's get inside the car oh be careful sometimes these roll cages fall on your head I've had that really As my school report said, could have done better. There we go, we've got a crossbar in. As I said, wasn't gonna do it, but I did. I only tacked in. Just makes it look like a roll cage. So yeah, could have been nice to come slightly higher that side, but then it just gets to the point where you've got too many joins going in, into one area. But that'll do, that'll do is my philosophy which I'm not sure is not everybody's philosophy, but it's all a bit of lockdown fun, isn't it? I don't know when the lockdown's gonna end. I don't even think about it. We might even have this finished. <laughs> well, let's see if the battery's charged. Let's see if we can get it outside. got it out not looking too bad every time you drive it a little bit more in and out you get slightly less clunks 
which is always a good sign. That's how I tell if I'm nearly finished. When you get only one or two clunks, you're pretty much done. So uh, yeah, the roll cage is looking good. Next stage now is to position the body 100%. Obviously, as we said, we're just sitting on there. We can lift this, this you know, it's all just sat on at the moment. We can just lift the, the uh, shell off. But yeah, roll cage ain't looking too bad from a distance. Little cross beam in there, lovely. I still got the dash bar to do. And I'll push those out. As you can tell, if we go to the front here, so if the wind's gonna, once we push those out more, obviously, ideally, I would have gotten bent correctly, but it's all a bit of a guesstimate. Just wrapped a bit of bog roll around the microphone. Hopefully, uh, we might make a bit of difference. Hopefully, you're not getting too much wind noise. So, yeah, as I said, splay them out. I think they'll go, not a problem. And yeah, front end, all still to be worked on yet. I know, ABS is going, battery's moving somewhere else. It's, it's all very tight around the front, trust me. But I think we can make it work. As I said, radiator still to go in the boot. Yes, I'm driving around with no radiator. I'm a devil. So it's nice to get out. It's freezing, but at least the uh, sun's out. So uh, yeah, I think it's looking good. Hopefully you can give me some thumbs up. Still a long way to go yet. The target was, by the end of February, to have this sort of drivable, as in radiator in, and so I can sort of, you know, run it up and move it out of the garage easily and, you know, go up and down a private road if I wanted to. But I think that's pushing it a little bit now. But, you know, we'll just have to see how it goes. I'll talk about the fuel filler in a minute. I, I think it's worth getting the, um, the rear wing to show you, but... But basically, look at that. That's where the Subaru one comes up at the moment. Comes up rear behind the rear wheel. That's where the Metro is. The Metro, hang on, they might as well talk about it. The uh, 6R4 has the filler there. I guess that's where the tank was in front of the engine. So the 6R4 kit comes quite high up. So I'm thinking the easiest option would be to try and fit a filler cap just up in the top corner here. Then it would obviously go down without too much pipe work change. And uh, yeah, we'd fill in that one and uh, just leave the vest. I think we might be able to do it. We might be able to do it. Let me go get the rear wing. Okay, here we go. Metro old filler cap. 6R4 filler cap. Actually has one on the other side as well. I don't know if they ever had twin units or whatever, but anyway. Um, yeah, so actually, maybe this goes up and down a little bit fraction, but I think we've definitely got space to get one as high up as possible right in there. Which I should have saved the Subaru on, but I was too busy cutting stuff out and throwing it away. So we could maybe move that one up to there and uh, reuse that. Yeah, I think that'll work the best. All right, let's get to the end of the day. I'm tired. Time to uh, nearly call it quits. Nearly moved this. There's a little strengthening panel here that goes along the rear quarters by the sounds of it, or just around there. So that needs uh, adjusting. Sillily, sillily, I kept the cap from the Metro, thinking that would be useful. Yeah, yeah, I might be able to reuse that. What I forgot to do was keep the ignition keys. So I've got a cap. That nearly goes in because it's just hitting the panel at the back there. And I think that might work. And we can join that up with the, the Subaru outlet inlet. And uh, yeah, we'll just have to uh, little patch that down there, joggle it. A little bit of skimmer of filler. It's a rally car. So yeah, burgers for tea. I keep saying it's a rally car. I know some people ask questions. What rally thing is that MSI spec, blah, blah, blah. I'm just using rally car as a generic term. I don't know what I'm using this car for at all. Yes, it would be sensible to build it to some specifications, but I'm not sensible. This is just entertainment. And uh, yeah, 
that's it folks till next week maybe sooner if i can um hope you enjoyed it thank you for listening and watching